pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to this republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and it is all for the liberty and justice for all. Adequate notice of this meeting has been sent to all members of the Board of Education and to the Bergen Record in accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, 1975. Dr. Cass. All right, uh, we're going to start off with our Smith School presentation tonight, so I'm <coughs> immediately going to uh, turn over to Mr. Grosso, who will get us started. Very good. All right, terrific. Well, tonight we have, um, I'm very excited about this, because we have something a little bit different than what we presented previously in uh, the beginning of the year. The theme around tonight is basically opportunity, and when we look at opportunity, we look at opportunities for staff tonight, and we're looking at opportunities for students as well as families to get involved. We're going to start our presentation off tonight with a project that really it was through conversation amongst our staff um, to provide a way of sharing our best practices, a way of providing examples so we can learn from, and hence the Teacher Teaching Teachers Project. And we're gonna, I'm going to introduce to you uh, Mr. Maurer, who was really, really took this project over. And um, she's going to walk you through a little bit of this. It will engage you with um, just some of the resources that are available and some of the videos. She's actually become a, uh, our in-house producer. Um, and uh, this is a really great thing. So, take it away. Okay. Well, the Teachers Teaching Teacher Project is a tool to help thousands of teachers continue their professional development um, inside and outside the classroom. Uh, there's videos on it. There's resources from the teachers for the teachers. It. And so we're going to start off by showing you a video clip of writing workshop because that's our big area of professional development this year. There's one video clip of kindergarten practicing writing workshop, and then there's one of fifth grade practicing writing workshop. And this is to benefit the teachers so that they can see a nice model of what writing workshop looks like and what lessons look like. I'm not going to show you the whole clip because we are probably um, so we're going to show you the kindergarten clip first, and we'll show you a little bit of the intro, and then we'll go to the animated teachers talking to the classroom and how to help other teachers. Um,
Story of how this, how this started and how this was created. Um, I've had the opportunity this year to work on to work with the art department throughout the whole entire district. And um, it's been some really great sessions where we've bounced around a lot of ideas with each other, how can we provide more opportunities for students, um, and reach beyond the classroom. 
So one of the ideas that happened to come up um, during our professional development sessions was something called backpack parts. Now, aside from the regular instruction that goes on in the classroom, uh, the idea of backpack art is to really infuse culture, to infuse the idea of being creative inside of culture, and incorporating a lot of the academics, whether it be mathematics, whether it be social studies, and the art of science, uh, world language, to really embrace these individual pieces and then to enhance them with an art piece or an artifact. So I'm going to introduce to you Mr. Susan Bull, who is outstanding. You can see the reason why she is so outstanding. Um, she's going to talk a little bit about this project that we are really excited about. Thank you. 
This is just one of the many opportunities that um, we really have to provide this year. I just want to give a little bit of a plug. I'm going to do another plug on this. Um, we're really excited about this. Uh, this next Thursday is Smith's first annual art festival. Everybody here in this room is invited. I hope you do come because it is going to be outstanding. It is going to be interactive. So you'll have an opportunity to also partake in the events and create your own art pieces. You'll also get an opportunity to not only go to the backpack bar, but you'll also get the opportunity to look at what your children, what the children of, of Smith have been doing all year long. And um, like I said, we definitely would love for you to come out. It'll be a great night of festivities and enjoyment. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you to all our students for your great presentations and your excellent artwork. As Mr. Grosso said, and I, I can't, he, he said it better than I can, but uh, opportunities have been growing quite a bit at, at Smith School, and uh, the arts and education is so important to us. So, so to be able to see, and you, when you walk into the hallways, there's so much backpack art in the hallway at Smith right now. Um, so, so it's really caught on. So we certainly appreciate that Mrs. Wolf has brought that to Smith School and continuing the, the growth of, of the arts in our education at Smith. So thank you, thank you for the presentations. Um, our next presentation is uh, Mike McEwen. Uh, Mr. McEwen is a second grade teacher at Long School. Uh, last month was Autism Awareness Month in April. And uh, Mr. McEwen uh, did a presentation about autism. I won't go too much into it because I know that's what you're going to share, so I won't take away from what you're sharing. But uh, the presentation was to the entire students, uh, student body and, and staff at Long School. Uh, and it was so powerful and so age appropriate and so poignant that I think it really resonated with, with the entire student body and the staff. So immediately after that, we spoke and you know, I asked Mr. McEwen if he'd be willing to, to take his presentation on the road, so to speak, to, to Smith School and to Franklin School. And we were fortunate that he was able to present uh, to all of our elementary schools. And so I'll, I'll let you share uh, the substance of the, of the presentations, but I want to thank you certainly for doing that. Yeah, I, I, uh, last month, uh, April is Autism Awareness Month, and I felt that it was, uh, it was important to raise awareness and that uh, I spoke to our local principal, uh, Mark Brown, and our high school presentation, um, and we uh, gave some support. Um, Dr. Katz did, did one of our school presentations, and the part that he did really out is that I just kind of find him so late and uh, he to uh, do his schedule around to do this. What I'd like to do tonight is just to briefly show you uh, the different parts of it, um, what I did and, and why I chose to do it. Um, one of the things that I, I felt was important was to have uh, a connection, a connection. Uh, connection. And autism is all over the news. Um, I can't even give you an exact number anymore of how many, how many children uh, the ratio is. But when I first started doing this, it was one in eight weeks. Population that everybody knows somebody who uh, is someone that's raising awareness and that's right here to hear me. We can find out why in uh, just a sec. So we talk about what is autism, um, and I wanted to show them, you know, just so they can understand, um, all people with autism don't look any different than you and I. Uh, that was somebody with autism in their home, or here's somebody with autism in their home, um, hanging out with their cousin. Somebody with autism being silly with their dad. And at this point in the presentation, some of the kids will be like, hey, that's you. And I made a joke about my really terrible view, um, <laughs> which is very popular, but never going to happen again. Um, the reason that I wanted to do this, the reason why I, I wanted to show the connection, I wanted, I wanted to let them know that I had a personal connection to them. It was okay to ask questions, and it's okay to not be afraid. And we did have. Um, uh, Great conversations based on this. Um, so we got into what autism is. It, 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 it's, a, it's a disorder that affects how the brain works, and that it's a spectrum disorder. Um, and we talked about what a spectrum is, and, and my older kids are very great uh, at talking about the different color spectrum. How one end of the spectrum is nothing like the other end. And there's, there's so much in between. Um, this next one, I was going to leave out. And I'm so glad I did because um, when after we were done with the presentation, I got to go back to my classroom and I had my second grade students reflect on it. And I said, What was the most important thing that you learned today? And so many of them wrote this down. But they won't worry about the next week. I'm so glad I got that message out. Um, some children might have been worried about that. Um, and there were excellent classes in all the schools. Um, we talked about this one too. Playtime might, might not be a fun time uh, for, for children uh, who are on the spectrum. And that was maybe the concept that some of the children had with this moment. 
Mr. McKeown, I just want to say thank you again. I think it's obvious to people just hearing hearing you speak tonight how much you really your message meant to the students. And you know, it's not easy for people to get up and share stories that are personal. And you know, we, we thank you for doing that because it, it it makes a huge difference for for really our entire community. So really, again, thank you on behalf of all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, our uh, final presentation tonight is Washington School, uh, Mr. Rowe, and it's. Definitely has a has a connection to the, the presentation from Mr. McEwen. So, uh, Mr. Rowe and uh, Mrs. Louder and Mrs. Hadnot are all here from Washington School to speak about our ABA program. Um, Washington School is a very small school, as you all know, with a total of three classrooms. And over the course of the past year, I've given several presentations on the integrated program at Washington School. But we haven't finished up to do as much with the ABA program that has been up and running for the past uh, think three or four years and been highly successful. We have Ms. Dina Louder, who's a class teacher, and we have Ms. Dina Mara Hadna, who's a district behaviorist. Um, together, this group really makes the program. I talk a little bit about the structure of Washington School's program. As I said, it's a three classroom. And past year, we really focused on integrated classroom one and two in the present uh, presentation. An integrated classroom is where we have special education students educating general education students. Um, we have one classroom where the students are integrated in the morning. And there's a small self contained program for the students in the afternoon who have um, maybe a little bit more severe disabilities. The second integrated classroom has an AM session and a PM session. And the third classroom is Ms. Louder's classroom. That's an all day self contained student on the uh, office of the class. Ms. Hadnot is going to give a more in depth uh, description of the program as a behaviorist can. But the characteristics of the classroom is a very small classroom. As of right now, we have six students in the classroom. Last year, we had seven. I think based on graduation, when we begin next year, we'll have a total of six starting schools. At a very low student to staff ratio, right now we have, for the six students, we have one classroom teacher and four paraprofessionals. So they're getting very intensive services. 
and they can see the full day program through the disability requires that. The training needs of the program, ABA is a very um, technical, involved um, style of teaching that requires a lot of data collection, and with that requires a lot of support from behavior and administration. And then again, I said we have behaviors that supports uh, things like that. So we went ahead and did that, and we proved uh, about by behavior analysis, what it is and how it benefits our students. So first I want to thank you so much for the opportunity to come in. I'm very excited to be talking about um, educators here in the book. The hearing is incredible because on the other hand, um, we are actually receiving the students. Um, we're receiving the daughter of the students. And we took their job very seriously. Um, we're very dedicated and passionate about it. Um, and it's a data-driven environment. So if you really look at applied behavior analysis and the Google application for behavior analysis, the whole process, um, what it looks like is it's like the environment that are currently present and how to use those to enrich it so that we can use them and help the students. The classroom environment is set up a little bit differently than the typical classroom. Um, as we did through this book earlier, there's a lot of stimuli, um, visual, auditory stimuli in the world. Again, um, these things are things that we need to think all the time about. Can we actually live with some of that? Um, the classroom has less stimuli in the payment. Uh, the students are required to speak the language and they're using the tech web. We have to make this build up verbal behavior. Um, man who acts is the same thing as classroom management items from the very start. So we teach the students how powerful their language is. Um, and once they start to see that and it becomes functional for them, they actually start to apply it in a really good form. The beauty is that we have students, as we said earlier, on the spectrum. Um, so we've got non verbal students who use them as a special that just don't have the condition to use them. Um, and they're further defined in terms of their physical and their you know, their body, the way they use their knees. Um, so we look at ourselves and whole classroom as a therapeutic model. Um, so these ABA principles are actually built into the system and built into the overall environment. Um, the student would want access to uh, a puzzle. The puzzle is not easy to even go and grab it off the shelf. The student actually has to go with himself and request the puzzle. If he doesn't have the language, he may be able to point. Um, so we teach him how to point. We want our students to be successful in every aspect of their day. Um, so one of the things that I talk about a lot and kind of adopted as a model is um, teaching to the grade. So in our classroom, when we teach our students, we have to hear a lot of really close teaching verbally. The students know that they're doing it right and um, they get right for that. So the key details is the way that you want to model the ABA classroom. Um, they can go a little bit more to show their body controls and the system and they can a lot of reinforcement. Um, and what that does is it teaches us a lot about the whole football team. We learn to motivate them, we learn about the football team, we learn how to teach them. So everything is differentiated from the minute they walk into the classroom to the minute that they walk out, and everything is different. Um, this data is built off 75 years of market research, um, nothing is brand new or different. Um, but we also need new teaching in the market. Um, so we brought up the artists who are in the hobby every day creating different things and teaching things in a different way to make it fun and hands on. Um, so there is definitely room for the art to play with the data. So as Mr. Rose said, that's a lot of students, um, there's a lot of need, and there's a lot of learning and there's communication that happens. So we always look at ourselves as that environment, that, that person that is actually working from behavior, but we're also seeing ourselves as a prompt that we touch. Um, so we actually learn how to date ourselves out and then teach students in the same way. And this is all driven by the goal that goes to what you expect of us. Um, the world is changing for all students. Um, this is a team of presentations like that are actually changing every second. But the truth of the matter is there's a lot of people in the world who don't want to be at all. So my team is up here already. Um, and we don't have time to talk about it. So we are actually trying to to uh, increase their appropriate behavior and teach them how to ask to the things that are not appropriate and they shouldn't be. And so you see that as we manipulate our attention and our reinforcement. Um, kids have a beautiful picture of a whole child. Uh, we speak to a lot of parents and students with autism, they don't know the whole child. Um, but if that's the picture, they don't even know and they're not aware of. Um, so that also is something that we share with our parents. That we have to have this collaboration uh, where we just want to teach the students our ability to read and learn by um, and then in collaboration with our therapist, how we can be more helpful to the therapist, all of that is also built into the classroom, into the environment. Um, so the application of management and all that is really possible. What Warren has awarded us is once a month the other day, um, where we can kind of sit down and pull people out and talk about what their perspectives are gaining. Um, it's almost like a peer training. So I have certain skill sets, and Ms. Father has certain skill sets. So I know where she is, and I can go to her. Um, she knows her students and where they are, and she can build on that and learn more about students. So we're always looking at where people are and trying to build them up. Whenever there's a change that fits the individual type, we try to figure out what type will work for our students. Um, and now we have a great uh, Google Map class. The last couple of years, I've been called the name of the subject, so it's really looked at those areas, those skill sets, and it gives us a visual representation of where our students work. So 
The results of that, we were able to pull out the little skill set that we needed to target, and we were able to develop programs with that. Um, so actually, this is what we train in how to develop programs. Um, and also, we're able to use the principles to make sure that we can carry over to any environment, not just an ACE classroom. Um, so it's really amazing. It's a, a really interesting environment. Um, our students are very happy, and for us, it gets hard when they do need to make that first cover, the first word. And we get some pictures of them actually transitioning between the classroom and the screen. Or the minute that they do training, like having five women in the back of the neck. Um, it's amazing. And every day it makes you want to come back. It's a hard job, but it's a beautiful job. There's nothing to say. Um, so TV Map Ahead, we spoke about earlier, TV Assessment. The TV Assessment was really hard in the sense that there was a very good piece of science on it. So Florence Potter had to sit there and assess kids for just a really long time. And you look at every moment in the school one. Um, so this year we adopted the TV Map, and it looked at um, 150,000 of the Target. It gives us something called the barriers assessment and the transition assessment. So it breaks down the students into three categories and it shows you where the problems are exactly, where we should target first, so that we will not make the this time. Um, and it also helps us to develop more appropriate IT goals so we can learn to be better. So we can keep learning on the point of the support them at the same time. Um, next year, what we're looking to do is bring more of these IT units in to come prepare them to take the ACE too. And they also can start to try things in terms of because that partnership is really going to be successful. But I wanted to show you guys what um, a couple of students see. It's hard because it's really hard to make people want to data. <laughs> this, this is the EGLE assessment. Um, because it's beautiful data, I wanted to show it. But again, this is over 360 targets. It's a lot. Um, but this particular student came to us with no verbal behavior. He had no language. Um, he couldn't even speak at all. So when we first thought of it as the first assessment, that's coded by yellow. Okay, so the first time he came in, he only had the skills that are presented in yellow. Okay, the second assessment that we did, he added in those blue components. Okay, so all the blue was our second assessment. Um, the third was pink, the fourth was green, and then the final was purple. So unfortunately, I mean, time is of the essence. We couldn't fill all of these in for the students, but we made pretty big leaps and bounds, and the student's now able to talk and transition, and he's a lot more confident, and he's clean, and he's comfortable. Um, and that's what we want to see. We want to see kids in their own environment to learn and feel good about that. Every school should be like that. Um, and that's what we teach in our program. Um, the next student actually came to us with, oh, oh I'm sorry, this is the second part of the same student. Um, and, uh, yes. This student actually came to us with basic um, three word uh, requests. So she was able to say, I want puzzle, I want book. Um, she wasn't able to tell you if you want two books. She, didn't, she couldn't tell you which book she wanted. She was just using clean verbiage. And they were very contrived. Um, we were only able to get her to say that language and utilize that language. And we really created the environment um, to be very specific. And that's not what we want. We want her to be able to ask for a book where there's no book present. Um, we want her to be able to be functional using that language. So she had a little bit of a higher skill set when she came in. Um, and those are the yellow points. What these little boxes indicate is, say J18, um, this will correlate to a book and show the actual skill. She had half of the skill, but not at the level that she should. So as a teacher, what you could do is you can go to J18 and pull it out and say, oh, she, she has the three words, but she's not able to add an adjective to it. I'm going to start there. Um, and we continue with that. So all of our programming is developed specifically on the areas of need because we want to maximize that time. Um, yeah, the new one, the BB Math, um, it's only about 12 categories. It actually correlates to um, age levels. It goes up to age four. If you think about the verbal components of a four-year-old, they're pretty much on the basis. Um, so they're in the back point, you're able to change, you're able to retain information, you can instruct them to get an eight out of the seven feet, and then you need them to use age to start learning. Um, so that's the medical that people stop. The stop is the important to age four. If you just hold that in it, you can go on forever. Um, there's just this communication in between the two. And that's something that you see that other people can tell you it's a lot more easy to apply and it takes a lot of time and the information is great. And it can really drive the um, to be motivated with it and also prove whether or not students need to be restrictive. 
guidance about calming down before they begin to shrink or improve the whole system. Um, but it also just says that in the case that the human is able to talk to the important people that are with them, have questions about their them, it was easy for people that need to feel uncomfortable with the whole system of consumption. So that's something that we, we're very excited about this year. So we actually started building some pricing schemes and things that we need um, to realize the same. So it's a good thing. And I think you guys can talk to me and we'll make better sure that we're going to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you to, to all of you also. I, I mean, you did such an excellent job at, at highlighting the program that it's hard for me to add anything to, to what you shared, but uh, I think the important point is, is what Mr. Rowe uh, just said, that you know we're, we're starting new programs to be able to keep these students in our school district, which is exactly you know where they belong, but it's, it's, it's the program right now that exists at Washington School that allows that to happen, because if your class wasn't showing the kind of growth that, that you just showed us, then you know we wouldn't be able to. So. Thank you for, for your great work. Thank you for presenting. May I have a motion to take a five minute recess, please? Second. All in favor? Motion. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion to go back to open session? Second. All in favor? Opposed? Can I have a motion to open the meeting to the public for agenda items only? All in favor? Opposed? Residents are requested to state their names, addresses, and subject matter. In the event it appears the public comment portion of the meeting may exceed 45 minutes, the presiding officer may limit each statement made by a participant to five minutes duration. Issue raised by members of the public may or may not be responded to by the board. All comments will be considered and a response will be forthcoming if and when appropriate. The board asks that members of the public be courteous and mindful of the rights of other individuals when speaking. Specifically, comments regarding students and employees of the board are discouraged and will not be responded to by the board. Students and employees have specific legal rights afforded by the laws of New Jersey. The board bears no responsibility nor will it be liable for any comment made by members of the public. Members of the public should consider their comments in light of the legal rights of those affected or identified in their comments and be aware that they are legally responsible and liable for their comments. Does anyone wish to be heard?
Does anyone else wish to address the board? Thank you, my name is Jamie Kerr. Um, I have to address that. Jamie is in the past and has a post in post in the world. And I have to say that the group that I've seen is really cute. Definitely has a pair of us. She has a playback. But I've seen so much that she's done in the past year and out of that. And she's a great teacher. And I feel like the thing I'm more cute is that why you should move her, but at the same time, she is you know, truly just an amazing person. And she inspires so many at the school. You know, we have a lot of these graduate students that have come in to do uh, requirements and just ready to do whatever. And she's one of the teachers who can help with doing the staff members, doing interviews, and trying things, and not be afraid to try the things. And as an educator myself, it's hard to try new things and be worried that something is going to fail. But she's one who's not afraid of that. And that's such a wonderful thing. Um, you know, she was out for the beginning of the year. And I knew that Jamie being in her class this year, having her for six months was better than not having her at all. And, you know, I'm, I'm leaving from the school at the end of the year. I'm having other little kids coming out. But she is such a great part of that. And being a person who's been so willing to stay in the last few years, she's one of the teachers who has a control in her almost every single month. She comes out to our events and comes to see her students. And that is very rare. And it's not that we have our whole staff who come to like that. You know, she's one of two or three who we just see all the time. And that's the kind of person that we need in our city. You know, she we're not just going to have her for students who want to be part of our group, but school community, our dinner, the Saturday community that we need for students. So to move her, yeah, she'll still be part of the Saturday community, but she won't be full out. And we just try to do it from the top. I 
so many great tools and techniques that she had pointed out. It didn't specifically come to mind. She used to work on this stuff every day. And I I I can I can I learned a lot from you and her and she just like this knowledge and friend and she really does care about how you do does anyone else wish to address the board? I'd just like to thank everyone for their comments this evening. I have a motion to close the meeting public. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, may I have a motion to go into closed session? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the board's going to go into closed session to discuss personnel per NJSA 10 4 6 7, Open Public Meetings Act. The subject matter discussed may be disclosed to the public if and when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Action may be taken by the board when the board reconvenes in open session. We're going to take a short break. We're going to leave the room here and we'll be back shortly. Right. Motion to go back into open session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, Mr. Karate, Business Administrator's Report, please. Thank you, President Garrick. Uh, this evening, I like a motion on uh, the minutes from April, checks, and the uh, transfers for March, and the Board Secretary and Treasurer reports for March. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, roll call, Mr. Brown. Mr. Armando? Yes. Mr. Quinn? Yes. Ms. Sanchez? Yes. Mrs. Canapaco? Yes. Mr. Singh? Um, I abstain from items A, section 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, Mr. Garrett. Yes. Here's my report. Okay. Uh, Casper, student representative report, please. All right. From Franklin School, they had their monthly million facts, and this month they actually reached another 150,000 math facts. And they also had their spirit day, which this this month was Rainbow Day, I think. And they had eight classrooms and two perfect attendance, so that was. That was good. Now for the middle school and high school. Yeah, good. This month there been a lot of testing. We had the park testing, which is over, over. In the AP classes, good. we just we just finished the AP testing this week. And good. And we have been been adjusting. That was a good testing. And the and the band and choir good programs have been dash having the we didn't have any concert this year, um, this month. The band already had theirs on May 7th, but the choir actually has their coming up on May 21st. And everyone's invited to come. And there's Teen Arts coming up from Mr. Garvey on the 29th. And I, mean, I know that a bunch of teachers are going this year for drama, creative writing, as well as going for the choir. So that's going to be a very fun event for all the students that are going. And also, Mr. Gelberg and the junior class is actually going to take a few, a few of the students that graduate from Franklin School and the kids that are the team pep class next year. And they're actually going to go to between, between the first to sixth grade classes and educate the students that about financial literacy. Every class, every grade level has a different theme for it. So it's something good. I'm part of it. and. I really can't wait for it. It's something new for the students. It's good. I'm Mr. Gavin will tell you okay, it is it's gonna be quite an experience for the teachers and for the students. And what else? And good for sports, the track and field, and the boys and girls they're county champions. They're on the boat to success this year. I'm looking for great things. Softball, softball and baseball are really good. And yeah. And Oh, uh, and for the middle school, there's also a parent, uh, a parent night on June 2nd for the upcoming 7th graders for next year. 
and this copy in the PTO also talking about having a field day for the seven and eighth graders, which that sounds like a lot of fun. That's it. Thank you, Joshua. Right. Casper, thank you. Thank you for your patience with us tonight. This is a little later than you're used to giving your report, so I appreciate it. Uh, student services, motion for items one through seven, but I need to uh, remove two of the cases from number seven in the motion. Uh, number 20145-12 and number 20145-16, so we won't take action on those tonight. Motion. Motion. Second. Local. I shall go local. Yes. Mr. Quinn? Yes. Mr. Sanchez? Yes. Mrs. Campeco? Yes. Mr. Singh? Yes. Mrs. Otterelli? Yes. Mr. Garrett? Yes. And curriculum motion for item one. This is our summer curriculum writing in uh, K through six language arts, K through six math. And Mrs. Uh, Steiner and Mr. Duval spoke about this Monday night. Any discussion? Motion. I move. Second. Local. Mr. Armando? Yes. Mr. Quinn? Yes. Ms. Sanchez? Yes. Mrs. Candeco? Yes. Mr. Singh? Yes. Mrs. Zarelli? Yes. Mr. Garrick? Yes. Okay. Um, business and board motion for items one through three. These are all current year, um, current year motions, field trips, workshops, and uh, bus drills. Move. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Armando? Yes. Mr. Quinn? Yes. Ms. Sanchez? Yes. Mrs. Campeco? Yes. Mr. Singh? Yes. Mrs. Zotarelli? Even though there's no course, I'm going to extend to one page. Yes, please. Mr. Garrett? Okay. Uh, even though there's no cost, I'm going to abstain from one seven. Yes to everything else, please. No, oh, sorry. Um, I'm going to put a large group here together. These are all of our uh, annual approvals for the 15-16 school year, so it's a motion for items 4 through 31. Any discussion on those items? On um, item number 6, the approved project graduation. Are we as a board wanting to take project graduation on now? It's always been separate. We've but always we approved it as a district-sponsored event. It's for insurance purposes. Okay. Any other discussion? Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. Motion to accept? Second. Roll call. Mr. Armando? Yes. Mr. Quinn? Yes. Ms. Sanchez? Yes. Mrs. Scanapaco? Yes, but I don't know on item number seven. Item is one through nine. No to number eight. Is it one of the 31? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, 31. Number seven, all of that, and number eight. acknowledgement as opposed to an approval. Sorry. Okay. Mr. Singh? Yes. Mrs. Zotarelli? Yes. Mr. Garrett? Yes. Okay, and then the final items in this section, uh, motion for items 32 through 37. Any discussion on those items? Well, any motion. Motion, uh, motion to approve. So move. <coughs> Second. Second. Any discussion? Um, just to point out that uh, 32 and 34 and 35 are all related to the approval of our referendum and our referendum projects. Uh, number 36. Uh, is a switch in uh, prescription plans for our district coverage. Any other discussion? Question? Mr. Croy? Mr. Armando? Yes. Mr. Quinn? Yes. Ms. Sanchez? Yes. Mrs. Scanapaco? Yes. Mr. Singh? Yes. Mrs. Zarelli? Yes. Mr. Garrett? Yes. Um, motion to approve policy. Take your time. Um, the, the policy committee met on April 22nd um, at 4.30 p.m. 
Dr. Katz, Mr. Karabi, Dave Beard, Regina Borali, Carmine Boothby, and myself were present. Um, we sat with Amanda Penna, who is the Community Programs Director. She was um, there to present um, her reorganization for the summer camp, which I just want to commend her. She did a fabulous job. Um, and hopefully all of our children sign up for it and um, enjoy it. Um, the camp's going to be held um, at Smith School. Uh, age groups were kind of reconstructed. Um, there'll be pre-K, K-1, uh, K 2 to 3, and 4 through 6. Uh, Pre-K is going to be a two-hour program. The entire camp day is going to be uh, 10 and a half hours. There will be more flexibility with schedule regarding how many hours and days that parents have uh, for an option um, or a camp would like to attend. Uh, they're bringing back Safety Town, which was a huge part of the community school. Um, they're going to have a mad, mad scientist guest, um, which will help incorporate the STEM that is now you know, incorporated into our um, curriculum. So they'll bring that over into the camp. The camp is open to um, all students, out-of-town residents. Uh, the only requirement is that a camper must be free by June the 1st and be high trained. Um, each week uh, will coincide with the trip and they'll kind of be, um, it'll go along with the theme of the trip. Um, the trips are new um, and really, really nice trips too. Um, they will be, the camper will be responsible for the trip fees, have to sign the permission slip. Counselor to camper, re, camp, counselor to camper ratios um, are being worked on, they'll be in place, so that will be taken into consideration. It won't just be for the kids with, you know, a counselor. There will be ratios. Um, there's been a, con a consolidation of titles um, down, you know, kind of narrowed down to um, lead counselors. Um, counselor, junior counselor, and volunteers. Uh, there'll be two lead site coordinators instead of just one. So the entire 10 and a half hour day, there'll always be a lead um, coordinator there. Um, salaries were adjusted to be fair and appealing. Um, all staff will be in t-shirts. They'll have photo IDs so that parents can identify workers Students, campers will be able to identify, um, you know, who to go to for help. Um, there'll be background checks, fingerprinting, and interviews for all new employees. Um, our school nurses, Ellen Fury and Karen Kenny, are going to provide uh, CPR training, AED, which is the external defibrillators that are hanging in all the schools, as well as EpiPen training. Um, so that there will be designated first aid um, throughout the camp, on the trips. The camp for the first time is going to be peanut free. Um, parents will have to pay by the Monday of that week. Um, and there will be a discount for siblings or people paying for the full eight weeks. Um, so you, know, you can earn a discount that way. Any hardship cases, um, students that are subsidized from the Office of Family Services may continue to receive financial assistance for the camp if they aren't already, um, you know, set up a free um, office and they can apply. Um, the process takes approximately um, one month. So that was her visit. And then the policies that were, um, that, that changes to it. Um, policy 5200 um, in reference to attendance. Um, it just clarifies new regulations in code um, from September 2014. Um, it, it's just kind of recording um, excused and unexcused absences as far as truancy is concerned. Um, and promotion, retention, and course credit. Um, at the high school, um, 16 absences were maybe um, able to be made up. After two, 22 absences, absences, there's no recovery. Um, and students can be retained. 
Um, at the elementary level and middle school, it's 20 absences. Um, a note from a parent, unless, of course, it's, it's being excessive, um, will count as an excused absence, but work must be, must be made up. Any suspension will be an excused absence. Um, as far as uh, policy 2624, um, it was created, it's just regulation. Uh, kindergarten grades will be given out at the end of trimesters. Um, it'll be created this summer and will correspond with the goals. Um, and grading systems will now be universal throughout the district. Um, and will uh, standardize scales for elementaries 1 through 3 and 4 through 6. So that it's all on the same playing field. Uh, policy 5460 for graduation. Uh, the next generation science standard. Um, they were required to um, accumulate 15 credits. Um, this is just ensuring that courses um, are required versus electives. Um, the benchmark is 30 credits per year, so 30 credits for freshmen, 60 for sophomore, etc. Um, if a student does not meet those credits, they still be eligible to participate as their peers. For instance, as a junior, you can go to the junior and senior firm. So it's just say a student you know, is shy five credits from being a junior, they will still be able to participate as their, you know, with their peers. It will, you know, it's going to count obviously for graduation. So they're penalized more academically than they are socially. Um, the HESPA, um, the High School Proficiency Test, um, is no longer required to graduate. There are other measures in place that students will have to meet. For example, um, they can use an SAT score, the ACTs, starting in uh, 2018 though, their part um, will count towards their graduation um, requirement, you know, their, their requirement. However, passing the part in any year of high school will meet that graduation. So it's not that they have to pass it in, you know, their 12th year. Um, and that was probably the most significant change in that policy. Um, policy number 5600, which is relevant to code of conduct, was revised because we were missing, um, we were kind of missing um, a list. Uh, we're missing the list of positive behavioral support. So code of conduct has to just not have consequences, negative consequences, but also positive consequences. So, yes, thank you. Yeah, no, yeah. thank you. It sounded like it got cut yeah. off. Yeah. It just said lists. Yeah. Um, <laughs> policy 0152, the majority of members um, present at a board meeting when it comes to voting for um, election of officers. Um, the majority of mem members present uh, will be considered um, a legitimate vote. Uh, policy 2622, student assessment. We're just going to follow state recommendations and guidelines. Um, it just states that the district will comply with the DOE requirements for testing. Um, there is no provision for opting out. Um, and it just references the common core instead of the old NJCCCS. Um, policy 4212, um, this just adds the NJSA 18A definition of sick leave for support staff and teaching staff, um, which is a person's absence due to personal disability, um, due to an injury or an illness. Um, Substance abuse policy 321E is the teaching staff. This outlines new standards and procedures for use when a staff member is suspected of, of reporting to school under um, the influence. It procedures more detailed um, than in the past um, and will be reviewed by attorneys. Um, policy 0134 is the board self evaluation. It's no longer required, but uh, still encouraged. Policy 5460 is early graduation. This was revised to reflect new requirements and removed reference to the HESPA. Policy 86, 
three zero is the bus driver slash bus aid responsibility. It designates uh, requirements and responsibilities regarding emergency procedures for drivers, bus aids, um, and district <coughs> personnel. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Personal. Thanks. We did a lot in policy that day. Thank you. Uh, personnel motion for items one through four. Motion to accept. Second. Any discussion? I just want to thank these staff members for, for their service to our district and, and wish them all luck in their future. Roll call. Mr. Sacramento? Yes. Mr. Quinn? Yes. Ms. Sanchez? Yes. Mrs. Canapeco? Yes. Mr. Singh? Yes. Mrs. Zanarelli? Yes. Mr. Deere? Yes. Uh, motion frame is 5 through 11. Um, motion to accept? Motion. Any discussion? Roll call, Mr. Brown. Mr. Sacramento? Yes. Mr. Quinn? Yes. Mr. Sanchez? Yes. Mrs. Scanapico? Yes. Mr. Singh? Yes. Mrs. Zotarelli? Yes. Mr. Gura? Yes. Uh, motion for items 12 through 18, which are all appointments uh, and positions for uh, the 15 16 school year. Motion to accept? Any discussion? I just need to make a comment. Um, difficult day today, looking at what we have to decide on. A lot of times it's not easy making decisions. As a board member, I've gone through a lot of training as well as everybody else. The board is trained and we're told and we're asked to look at the school district as a big picture. And the decisions are difficult to make a lot of times. Um, you know, not always is everyone happy with the decisions we make. Um, we have a lot of great staff here in the schools. Wherever they're going, they're going to make their imprint in the schools to do a great job and to affect the lives of those students as well. Um, difficult decision tonight. Um, I think we all know what we're talking about. I'd like to also thank everyone for coming out and commenting, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Mr. Uh, Sacramento? No, I'm 13. Uh, yes, I am. Mr. Quinn? Yes. Ms. Sanchez? Yes. Mrs. Scampico? Yes. Mr. Singh? Yes. Mrs. Zarelli? Yes. Mr. Gira? Yes. Uh, motion for items 19 through 30. These are the remaining items. These are a combination of summer camp positions, uh, which obviously Mrs. Scanapieco just spoke about, um, the camp, um, a new appointment at a utility position that we've had vacant for much of the year, um, and some debris changes, but those are the, those are the highlights of those. Mr. Armando? Yes. Mr. Quinn? Yes. Ms. Sanchez? Yes. Mrs. Scampieco? Yes. Mr. Singh? Yes. Mrs. Zanarelli? Yes. Mr. Gira? Yes. Uh, committee reports, we did some today with the policy today. Monday we had some. Uh, the next negotiations meeting? With, uh, on the 18th. Okay. Um, correspondence. Business. Any business? Do the motion of the meeting to the public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Anyone wish to address the board? Motion to close the meeting to the public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion to go into closed session to discuss an HIV case per NJSA 10-4-6 except Alter Public Meetings Act. The subject matter discussed may be disclosed to the public if and when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Action will not be taken when the board reconvenes at open session. We have a motion. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 